Welcome to the dark forest. Jackie and her pals will never bore us. Shameless confessions about our obsession will make us laugh and smile. So let's explore the dark forest and dark down for a while. Hi, Jackie Cation here. You're about to listen to the Dork Forest. You know the websites, dorkforest.com, thedorkforest.com. JackieCation.com has the links to everything. Merch, the new album, my other podcast, videos of me doing stand-up. Dorkforest.com has all the notes and the video that you can watch of this show. Traditionally, I tell you to donate to the Dork Forest, but it is November and December. I ask that you donate to a local food bank because you should. It's, I don't know, you should do it all year, but what the heck. If you are donating to the Dork Forest using the PayPal link that gives every month, you can turn it off and turn it back on. You can do a matching to your food bank and donate to me as well. But all the money that I get uh, from the donations from November and December, I'll give to my local food bank. And so I will get all of that sweet, sweet karma. Other than that, you can buy merch. You can, for Christmas, there's new, there's new t-shirts and stuff, but whatever it is, the Dork Forest, super fun, always available. I'm sure there's things I'm forgetting to say, probably band camp, but let's get into the show. Hi, Jackie Cation in my garage <laughs> with Tess Rafferty, who I've been making clap. And uh, and I have this to say, welcome back. You were just here, I swear to God, like two or three months ago. I forget what it was. And we talked about Italy. Yes, I think it was uh, since- fall, like September or something of 2020. Yeah, and you have since been to Italy. I did. I got back a week ago. Crazy. I know. That's awesome that you actually went. You're like, because now that the, a lot of the protocols are lifted and we're vaccinated and we can travel, you can go places and do things. Well, and what's, what's crazier about it too, is I was, go- I was actually going for work. Um, so it was just a bizarre thing where, you know, hi, sure. I'd love to go to Italy for work. Who wouldn't. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, but, but just various, so various things were happening very last minute and I didn't actually get my tickets till 24 hours before we left. Wow. Was that um, a deal? Did you get a deal? Uh, no, no, it wasn't no, even a deal. No, it was, it was, I, you know, I, obviously it was just because of what was going on on other ends and, and other various, you know, complications and stuff. Um, not through anything of my own, believe, believe me, I don't like to travel this way, especially internationally in the middle of a pandemic. Right, right. Yeah. There's still a pandemic going on. We're not, not in lockdown anymore, but there is still definitely a pandemic. And there's new considerations with testing and vaccines and what each country needs. And if you're flying, like we are flying through the U. UK, so they have a little bit of a different form that you have to fill out and the EU does. And I mean, the, the headline is that I felt very safe everywhere. Um, okay, good. Yeah. Good. I, I felt and safer there than I do here. Quarant- did, was there any quarantines or anything or? Uh, no, not with vac- not with proof of vaccination. Okay. Um, yeah. That's great. And no, it was, it was fantastic. And, but you, we needed a test. We had to test within 72 hours of landing before we left sure. here. We had to test before we left there to come back into the country. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, everywhere, they're very good about everywhere you go there, showing proof of vaccination to get inside a restaurant or a museum. Um, Museums were doing temp checks, which was really cool. They have this like from the future iPad thing that you just smile at and read your temperature. Yep. Um, and, and people, like, people were wearing masks and showing vaccine cards and no one was yelling at us and calling us a snowflake. Right, right. But I guess they were having uh, riots in Rotterdam because they don't want to show their vaccination cards and wear masks. So I guess Rotterdam isn't quite as enlightened as uh, Italy. Yeah. Um, or I guess England, but I don't believe any of that. I believe that there are banana heads in every country. Oh yeah. So, I mean, yeah. definitely. Yeah, um, you, you can go 45 minutes north of Los Angeles, uh, which I do every week. And everybody <laughs> is constantly surprised I'm still wearing a mask. But I also haven't had a cold in two years. So uh, they can fuck right off. Anyway, <laughs> we, uh, Tess Rafferty has a new book. Because when you were here, you talked about Italy and you talked about your first book. Yes. And then you wrote a novella. And now you have a second book. A second full length book that I wrote in the beginning of this year during lockdown. I've got a picture here for those of you watching the Zoom edition. That's it's, it, the Zoom on YouTube. It's um, called The Red, the Fed, and the Dead. 
Um, and it's the same cast of characters as the novella and the first book, Under the Tuscan Gun, which I also, right. I, I've got, I've got Oddly props. Enough. I'm a prop back now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so the first book took place uh, in the summer on the Tuscan seaside. And the second book is a holiday novella that takes place in Rome. Just a real, like a real quickie murder. You know, you get in, get out, solve it. <laughs> Um, Merry Holiday Christmas. Holiday murder. Merry yeah. Christmas. Um, and the third one takes place in uh, this, it's more of a spring, rainy season and takes place in Bologna, Italy, and the surrounding countryside, which is called okay. Emilia Romana. Okay. And, yeah. um, and, and it's called The Red, the Dead, and wait, The Fed and the Dead. The Red, and the be- Fed, and the Dead. Because there's communists, there's federales, and there's dead people. What are we talking about? So uh, the city of Bologna, which is a which is a really fun city, it feels to me like the Boston of Italy a lot, um, like a little okay. bit of a second city type of vibe. Um, you know, Rome sort of being more New York, although I'm sure Milan would have something to say about that. Um, <laughs> but but um, the you know, so so Bologna is they call it. Um, uh, lo Rosso, Lo Grosso, e La Dottoroso, I think, um, which is like the translates in American or English rather to the red, the fed and the learned, mm-hmm. because Bologna is known for having people with communist sympathies. Um, they're known for their food. Like a lot of people think this region is the best food in all of Italy. And um, and they're also known for having I think the, I think it's the world's largest university. I'm mean, sorry. Not OK. Large oldest sorry um so um so yeah so that's where the learned comes from so this is instead of the red the fed and the learned this is the red the fed and the dead because dies. there's because there's because someone dies because there's yeah. a murder and <laughs> yeah. uh because whenever tess rafferty meets somebody it's murder and uh <laughs> and it's italian murder recently so so the the cool. Th- so what you wanted to dork out about was is about this obsession you have with murder mysteries. And I like a murder mystery. I don't like them to be I don't like a true crime thing. Personally, I like a uh, a lighter, a lighter murder, like a bones. Anyway. Yes. Oh, um, God. Yeah. <laughs> but what? Yeah. Do, do you read them? Do you watch them? What is it? I devour them like they're pie the day after Thanksgiving. <laughs> um, I, I watch, you know, like every, you know, everything on PBS, BBC America, um, you know, I've gone through, you know, I've seen Endeavor constant, con- like countless times, gone through all the prime suspects, all the Morris and the Lewises. Um, and, and I read them too, because I read every night before bed. Um, so I, I found I'm going to say probably about five years ago, might have been after November 2016, let's say. Yeah, when you needed to check out a little bit, but also be entertained. And for some reason, solved murders, murders where the culprit is is found. And yes, and And doesn't end up going free and getting elected to office. Right. Oddly enough, would be outstanding fiction, you know, fiction. Yeah, it's so very. I, you know, I, I found that anything I was reading was so, you know, triggering. I mean, truly triggering. Like I would start a good book and then, you know, all of a sudden someone rounds a kitten and you're like, for fuck's sake, I just want to be entertained <laughs> and not like, and not, you know, yeah. I, I put down more books because something terrible happened in it. Right. Um, and and g- good books, books by great authors, but I'm just, I'm not in the mood for the girl getting buried alive right now, right? You know, mm-hmm. it's too close to what's really happening metaphorically in our country. So um, I found that these types of series, very light, very light series, or, or whether it's a TV show or a book, it's, you know, y- you feel safe in them because you know they're going to catch the bad guy in the end. No kids yes. are going to get drowned. Right, right. It's not, there There will be some version of justice. Even even like the, um, the Jack Reacher novels. Mm-hmm. I'm just like, well, there's there's no due process but uh it turns out the you know the good guys uh, win in the end so um i do like that there's due process in a lot of the british ones i can't watch all of the british ones like the only ones i've seen are and i've talked about them a thousand times are there's a new zealand one called broken wood mm-hmm. there's a, a australian one called miss fisher's murder mysteries oh yeah there's um and then there's a couple of british ones i've seen endeavor yeah and i just finished bletchley circle oh yeah which those yeah yeah. 
season one and season, there only seem to be nine episodes. Oh yeah, that's that's all they do. Endeavor, by the way, um, and I've got such the hots for the for Sean Evans who plays the lead and who plays Young Morris um, in that that I've now taken to call it masturbate mystery instead of masterpiece <laughs> mystery. <laughs> Turns out when you say that to someone who actually works for WGBH in Boston, that might, might be a little bit more inappropriate. But- right, there, right. There's a cough button and they're like, oh, we're going to delay that. Yeah. And- <laughs> But um, they so they have just been putting out. It's like Luther. Remember, Luther was like five or six episodes the first no. season. Um, I oh, never it, saw Luther. Oh, oh, Luther's great. It's a little grim, but, you know, you balance it out with Idris Elba. So, mm-hmm. you know, because, again, I don't like anything too grim, but sometimes, you know, sometimes you watch it anyway. Um, right. But um, in Luther, you know, you could chart Idris Elba's success as an actor by watching the subsequent seasons because it went from like six episodes to five to four like then there's like a season that's just one episode and that's a little what they're doing with Endeavor right now is it you know I think it was like around six episodes for the season and then the last one was only three and you gotta wait two years for the next one that's gonna be an episode and a half or something right right right. but um but I you know the problem is is we saw Endeavor in lockdown man we were Jones and sure. so we saw a lot we saw Endeavor and then we heard that it was a prequel to to Morris is Morris that what it was? Yeah, yeah Inspector Morris so Morris that's right so I tried we tried to watch Morris can't watch it at that order uh, because yeah. it just made me sad I was like, this is what this guy's life turned out to be? Boo. Uh, but if you go back, you, you're you sort of full of hope and his potential. Yeah. Uh, I make up fake stories in my head for like how him and Joan really got together. Yeah. Um, and then she like died on their wedding day. <laughs> <laughs> Just to like make myself feel better. Right. Um, Cause yeah, because Morris does. And I think I saw it in that order too. And, and it's actually it's hard to watch the early Morses only because they're so, you know, they start in the eighties, I think. And it's just a different. Oh, and the way they shot them has it as a, and the, and the ones that the Endeavor ones are literally beautifully shot. They're just that, that's what I kind of like about Bletchley circle is that it has that, that, uh, that old timey. It's like Andy calls Bletchley circle. Oh, this is the show with all the nice coats. (laughs) Those ladies are all wearing beautiful (laughs) coats. (laughs) he's a bit of a fashionista (laughs) he knows their coats (laughs) he he likes that there's that there's a nice long thigh length coat that the british like to wear because of the weather oh yeah the well i mean endeavor is gorgeous and sean evans again because i can dork out about endeavor sean evans the lead directs a lot of um the lex direct directs a lot of the episodes oh i did not know that okay. yeah he also directs a lot of casualty apparently that that british show that i've never seen but that's like their er or was er before we were er over here oh, okay yeah. okay um yeah. so so they're gorgeous and they're operatic and you know morse has that big thing where he loves the opera so yeah. you always got the gorgeous music but it's funny to see it juxtaposed i mean now we're in the early 70s at this point it starts i think in 1965 or 66 the you know the the backstory for this right. british detective um beloved british detective and um it's fun to see that juxtaposed with the pop music um of oh, the, right, of right. The era. yeah yeah the, the contrast of it it's uh so but morse does uh in morse does he listen to opera still Yes. Or is he just because he literally that first episode, I couldn't watch anymore only because he went to have a beer in what was clearly what looked to be an off track betting betting uh, <laughs> bar. And uh, it looked it did not look like the cool, you know, pub that they went to in the 60s. You know, no, no, he um, he, he does like the drink probably more than he should. Um, I might be understating that. It's been a while since I've seen that. <laughs> Yeah, the guy seems to be a bit of a lush. Yeah, but I, will, I will say that um, that when he drank with with his with the uh, with his captain or with the with his DCI, his buddy, gov, we'll call him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, then it was it was in a in an old English pub. This one, it's like he's partying in an airport. Right. I mean, it looks like he's gone to the 7-Eleven to buy a, a, an adult beverage and just sit in like the subway. And he's like, well, I'll get a subway sandwich, maybe. Oh, and a bunch of beer. And so, yeah. But um, 
but I do like I like the the murder mystery parts of them. They they had they were hard to figure out. You know, they weren't obvious. I like the writing on them. Yeah, I mean, it really is because I've you know I I was you know like I watched um, all of the closer and major crimes. Okay. In, during a lockdown. And, wow. okay. you know, yeah, yeah. I got, I mean, I will, again, I will just, I will just binge. Um, I will just, I will eat my way through like a beaver on a wood pile. <laughs> like, I will. What's the, what's the, um, the closer? I forget who the, who's, who is with that? It's Kira Sedgwick. Okay. Um, and uh, you could basically always figure out who did it. Because if you just looked at all the guest stars as they introduced them in the first few minutes, there was like always like, okay, well, these are the people acting like they did it. So, you know, they didn't do it. They didn't do it. So you were like, okay, so what's this actor doing here? If it was an actor, like either an actor who was too big to just, you know, be an under five or something, Mm -hmm. or if it was a character of like, I'm not sure why we needed to meet the gardener of the person who died. <laughs> that seemed really random. Then you're like, well, they're the killer. So, so, <laughs> it, it, and it's, so you start to see the pattern. You totally start to see the pattern. Again, they're not meant to be watched like eight on a Sunday afternoon because you can't go out of your house. Right. Um, you know, although that's how we're consuming everything now. And, and sure. even like I was watching uh, something called the Majorca Files recently. <laughs> Oh, God. I, like, is, is that the one where the guy is a super neat Nick and he goes to, and he gets transferred to Mallorca because his coworkers can't stand him? That's Death in Paradise, which I'm also oh, watching. <laughs> OK, I, we saw <laughs> Death in Paradise. I love Death in Paradise. Um, What's the Mallorca Files? The Mallorca Files, it, it's it's sort of Death in Paradise, but flipped. It's it's a woman who is very um uh, t- you know, type A OCD, possibly on the spectrum, like a hard ass detective. Bit of and a pill. She- yeah. So she- yeah, <laughs> that's how they would describe her. Um, and uh, she ends up transferred to Majorca. Um, mm-hmm. uh, like, I don't know. I don't know what the program is where all these cops get to go to countries that aren't <laughs> their own. Theirs. Yeah, yeah. They- <laughs> you don't have any jurisdiction here, but we're, we're transferring you. Yeah, but and- come work. <laughs> Um, We're looking for someone to take our, take care of our criminals, which there was no crime before you got here, but for some reason, you know, and we can't do it ourselves, but it would help to have an English person. I don't know. Yeah, murder um, She wrote that small town where there was a murder every week. So, and you know what I'm in? I doesn't, I don't, I don't need to know the ways and the wares for us. Um, right. I will suspend some disbelief to see some nice coats and to maybe, <laughs> and I like them because there's sometimes the, the relationships are quippy. They're, they're well-written. I, you know, they're travel porn. I mean, Death in Paradise, gorgeous. Majorca yeah. Files, beautiful. Um, and so her nemesis um, is this German guy, German cop, again, don't know what he's doing, why he washed up on the Majorca <laughs> shores. <laughs> But running with it, um, yeah. So, so these two solve crimes together, along with the uh, the female, uh, I guess, chief of the actual Spanish police who have jurisdiction. Okay. And, um, yeah. So she's in there. Um, but uh, but yeah, I was watching one of them, and I'm so like, you know, now like again, you you watch enough of this stuff, and it's about this sort of doping scandal with a biker, uh, you know, a, a bicyclist, not a. Harley oh, Davidson, right, right. Angel, yeah, and um, and I'm like, well, obviously, obviously, he has a twin. <laughs> uh, <laughs> They're like, you know, we sure he's doping, but he keeps testing positive. I'm like, well, clearly, he has an identical twin out there who's doing the t- drug tests for him. Duh, like, who doesn't see this? Right. I have to say that when once you start watching them, you will see that some of the plots. You're like, hey, we saw this one. Ha- this happened in that in that other one and um i wonder if, like i wonder if the writers watch them and they're just like there's only so many different you know ways well, that some people and and everybody looks really gross now like i think that all the act the the makeup mm-hmm. they can make dead people look super dead yeah oh yeah yeah um they can make you know absolutely i mean it is like look as someone who writes who writes this stuff as well as yeah. loves this stuff. And I don't want to sound like I'm being too hard on anything. It's, it's kind of the reason why I 
focused on writing this stuff is because I'm the asshole who goes in to see Sixth Sense and uh, literally two minutes into the movie, I go, oh, Bruce Willis is really dead. Right, he's a, he's a ghost. Yeah. Uh, I didn't know until the second beat. By the way, spoiler alert for the movie that's 25 years old. So, uh, and Rosebud is a slut. You so, will get letters, uh, by the way. I won't get letters. Yeah. Everybody. <laughs> but, the, uh, but the craziness is that, like, I didn't know that he was a ghost until they're sitting at dinner at the end of the movie. Mm -hmm. And the fork drops the second time. <laughs> so I was like, oh, see, so I'm perfect for these things because I, I don't know who anybody is. And I, I know that it isn't the one that's obviously supposed to be, right? Right, right. Because, because that, much, that much I've followed. But, um, but when it does come to whoever is the murderer, I'm always like, oh, weird. Okay. All right. And uh, so I am like a child. I can watch them over and over again and go, I kind of remember. No, I don't remember. Who is it? I, I can. I, I've been rereading a book series right now that I think I've read twice before. Like I read once the first time and then I think I've probably read most of it a second time. So for the, it's called, it's, this is a total guilty pleasure. It's called Agatha Raisin by M.C. Beaton. Okay. Um, MC Beaton is this really fascinating character because she died late. She died a year or two ago. I think it was late in the year. I can't remember if it was late in the year last year or the year before. Okay. She was well into her 80s. She okay. was publishing so many books a year, I can't even tell you. Wow. Um, you just working. She she had this, she has this series called Hamish Macbeth which is a very popular, it, that's been going around, I think for 40 years, it's about, I believe he's Scottish, but you know, somewhere in the UK kingdom detective, it's right. also been made into a TV show. She writes, um, she writes some murder mysteries that take place in the, the Regency era, which I'm not a fan of, so I don't read those, but I'm, but you know, she writes, I think just regular kind of romances that take place in the Regency area. She's got a bunch of different pseudonyms. And, um, and so I'm just kind of fascinated by her because She's super prolific, super prolific. And again, a female writer of an era where it was hard for women to be writers and worked up and, uh, you know, up until she died in her mid or late eighties. Wow. And, and so Agatha Raisin is an interesting story. It's, it's a, you know, there's some hokiness in some of these cozy mysteries. Like I, I feel a little bit like I'm confessing a little bit like, oh yeah, I, you know. Uh, welcome to the dork forest. <laughs> uh, there's, I mean, the safest space of the world to say that you like to read some prose that isn't an iambic pentameter. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> Don't sweat it. <laughs> but, but one of the cool things is that it's about this woman. The book is about this woman in her 50s. Mm -hmm. And the idea is that she came from a rough childhood. She became a successful PR person. She made a lot of money. She sold off her thing. And then she kind of, you know, takes early retirement to the Cotswolds and ends up becoming a, a private detective. Okay. And, and so for all the kind of hokiness and sometimes she does things that are silly and whatnot that you kind of don't believe for someone who's a savvy businesswoman, <laughs> but you're like, all right. <sighs> but, but there's also this thing where, Again, this this woman who's right, you know, painting some of the characters or things with broad strokes, really kind of also does talk about like how this woman's invisible now because she's in her fifties, right. and how you know she gets nagged by you know younger people or you know mm -hmm. uh, or feels diminished by and dismissed by people because of her age and how she looks, and she still has sex. She, you, right. know, she, you know, she still dates what, people. When, when were these ones written? The Agatha... they're, still, they're still being written. I think they're on number 32 or something. Because now she's got like a guy who kind of took over the series for her. Oh, okay. So, but there's, died. there's dozens of them. And, um, and, but when did she start writing them? Like in the 60s? Um, no, it must have been did in the 80s. Did you start from the beginning? I, I, I did start from the beginning and I can't remember how I found the series you know, Amazon, you know, yeah. really the, the algorithm just starts popping stuff up into your feed <laughs> after right. a while. So I did start at the beginning. So, I mean, I would say probably 1990 is when they started, if they're on like the 32nd book or something. So 89, sure. 90. And, um, you know, so it's, it's, so it's kind of like for all it's, you know, there, there's little moments of like a quiet revolution in there. <laughs> um, 
with her and she's not always the most appropriate character and other, you know, things, but um, it, it's, you know, and I'm, I've been rereading them cause they're good for, Oh, I'm on an airplane for 12 hours or, yeah, you, know, yeah. when I, you know, you're not going to focus on like, you know, the, the winner of the Booker prize when you're hitting no. turbulence. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, there's things and, and there's something soothing about rereading. I love rereading quite honestly. It's one of my drugs of choice. <laughs> and, uh, so it is, um, yeah, I, that's, that actually sounds sort of right up my alley. Cause I like, um, I like a mystery. I like a lightly written mystery, but that has kind of a nice sociopolitical, like weird, cause I have a theory and, 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 I, I've always tried to do a bit about it, but it never really worked about how the worse the like the the worse the movie, the mm-hmm. more political the B plot. Oh. Right? Yeah, and there yeah. are there there are very, very popular movies that have very serious B plots, right? Like if you look at Footloose, yeah, is a very dumb movie. <laughs> but censorship is bad. Right. And, <laughs> yeah. And if you look at um Patrick Swayze dancing. Um, Dirty dancing. Keep abortion legal. Yeah. Right? And um, Blue Crush. Blue Crush, weirdly enough, a right-wing message. Uh, True happiness comes through corporate sponsorship. (laughs) (laughs) So, I mean, it's a weird, like, it's a weird thing. So when you, when I read some of these books that are considered sort of pulp or crap or not well, like, it isn't the greatest you know, it isn't the Booker Prize. Right, right. Because those books, I think sometimes some people write those books with the big message, right? It, when instead, if you read yeah. Lois McMaster Bujold's space opera books, uh, they <laughs> their message is, you know, it's, 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 um, I th- it, you know, most of the Vorkosigan series is that there's no reason that ableism is really bad. <laughs> so, and, and it has, you know, a lot of sort of social justice stuff and, you know, sharing is a good idea and <laughs> um, education and, and women's rights and all of these things. And, the, and, and feudalism has its, you know, you know, could, take a hike but it has its purposes and and it has sort of historical lessons in it and all of this stuff is is belittled but it isn't i mean there's no reason to belittle it i mean there is something of value in every whatever i think about someone reading like it used to be this big thing um, about guys. They're like, "No, I like Playboy for the for the articles." <laughs> right, right, <laughs> right. And, and you're like, the articles were actually supposed to be really good. Well, it, it you know, it's it's a really interesting. I mean, that's that's an interesting thing that I've been. I I recently read and saw a documentary about the accounts of the the bunnies. A lot of the bunnies who work there mm-hmm. at the time, you know, and I read it up against, you know, the Gloria Steinem piece. Like I, I just kind of, it's a long story how I got there, but I was kind of doing this as a whole, like all side by side. And, um, you know, there was a lot of revolutionary things happening. And, and what I kind of took away from it was neither person's account was untrue of what was going on, but it was just a different spin and a different way of looking at it. And, um, and for a lot of these women, this job changed their life. Yeah, um, this job in a positive way in, in, in a positive way. And it's not something that I think unless you can think about the context in which they were doing this, I think it's hard for people to wrap their head around. But but there were women who were being interviewed who were married before 18. That was totally the norm. Uh, one woman had been married at 16 to her high school math teacher. She's like yeah. finishing high school. I'm married to her teacher. And again, it's like things that we that we find shocking now, but Mm -hmm, it's like, mm -hmm. this is the context of the time. So for her to get divorced and move to New York and end up, you know, pulling down a bunny, being a bunny and making her own cash Mm -hmm. for the first time in her life. It was, it was revolutionary. It changed people's lives. Right. I mean, the difference is the, the changes in civil rights for women specifically, um, 
since the advent of television is actually been like it's it's been exponential like it took a thousand years for women to get a bike right or a split skirt or whatever (laughs) and then um and then it took you know 60 years for us to go hey you shouldn't have to marry your math teacher Right. right. Your math teacher shouldn't be sleeping with his with his student. Yeah, yeah that should. Yeah, this shouldn't be a conversation where we, this shouldn't be a conversation. Yeah. So we've learned so much in the last 60 years and people keep trying to shove us back in the box. But, you know, it's open now. So it's hopefully uh, going to be very, very difficult to shove us back in the box. Yeah. And uh, yeah. And, and it's one of the things about Agatha Raisin, right, is sometimes yeah. the sometimes the revolution is just that they're showing a 50 something year old woman and she's the main character of her own series and people buy it. And that that's all it kind of needs to be. It does. That's what you get. That's what you get with that book. It doesn't have to be 30 layers of meaning. Right. And, And those books, those books get prizes for reasons, but they are also sometimes very difficult to read. You know, they aren't as easy to consume. And like, if you think about, I mean, all of this stuff with, I mean, like some of the murder mysteries, like, like the, especially the historical murder mystery, like Miss Fisher's murder mystery. I've talked about it a bunch in the last year and a half on the dark forest. Read them all, watched them all. I I might not have read the recent ones, but yeah. I've read maybe about a dozen and um, I don't, and I've, um, and I've watched them all for sure. The, the movie is not good. Um, <laughs> the, uh, but the TV shows were excellent. And she's always on the right side of history, right? Yeah. You know, and, it, and, it, and it's, it's, it's that representation thing, right? I mean, it, it's why Hamilton, the musical was so great to have cast people who happen to be people of color as the founding fathers. You're like, because they're just people but they were these egotists, these, these different egos and these different, but they're, but they're also it's George Washington. Right. And, but you're like, but that's that, that's his personality. That's how he was depicted in history. So. Yeah. It, it's like, I don't need to see anything else about how shitty women had it in the twenties. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and, and that's where, you know, th- there's, there's a whole subgenre in here of the flappers who solve crime. Oh, really? And, yeah, yes. Um, and they seem to fall into two categories. Um, there's one like Miss Fisher with okay. um, where, where the Miss Fisher murder mysteries. And, and by the way, that's Carrie Greenwood. I, I did a whole like I basically looked over the last five years of my Kindle like thing. I've got a whole I've got 28 different things listed with the author. So I'd remember and whatnot. Um, so I could credit everyone everyone appropriately. Yes, it's Carrie Greenwood. So, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so, so the flappers who solve crime seem to fall into two genres. And one is this sort of more chaste virginal flapper, which like, I don't, you know, whatever, um, (laughs) maybe other people around her are having sex, but she's not really having sex. Uh, but they're still drinking gin and doing the Charleston and solving crimes. (laughs) Um, and then there's more like Miss Fisher, where a lot of times these are women who, they're young, sexy women who got married to a much older man who may have been gay or just didn't want to have sex. And he was wealthy beyond belief. And then he dies. Falls over, <laughs> falls over in a heap, leaving her fabulously wealthy. Fabulously and a wealthy. <laughs> or, or just, or in a place where she, because she's been married, she, um, Oh, she's uh, given the freedom of that. that she's we given the, yeah, she's given the yeah. freedom of having affairs. And, and Miss Fisher, who is, hence the miss, has never been married. She's just wealthy and given to having affairs. Like some of these are, they're incredibly sex positive for the time. And, you know, um, they're, they're having love affairs. They're having multiple partners as, you know, they're not, they're not monogamous and they're solving crimes and wearing fabulous clothes. And that's really all I ever need out of my <laughs> entertainment for the rest of my life. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. I do love her clothes are amazing. She's good at everything. And um, so are the other ones, the flapper ones, where they're more chaste? Who writes those? Um, there is one called the um, the Royal Spinus series. Um, and that's by Reese Bowen. 
um, who writes other who writes other books as well. Um, and that's more, I guess it's technically more in the thirties. Like I've, I've actually broken this down to time periods. Um, sure. Probably the one, one of the, there's a couple that are very well written. Maisie Dobbs is a series and that's like, we have just gone through, uh, that's Jacqueline Winspear. And, okay. um, and she's quietly a revolutionary too, Maisie Dobbs is. And she starts off as someone who, is starts off in service in the the aughts or the teens of the early right. you know 20th century uh, becomes a nurse on the battlefield of world war one a lot of these women in these books have um they've either served in the like the office of secret services kind of like bletchley circle at some point they were either spies or nurses in one of the wars right, right. very common thread um so she becomes she goes and she serves as a young teen like a late teens early 20s girl in the war comes back starts her own detective agency and these books have been they've been writing she's been writing these books for so long now jacqueline winspear that they're not out now at world war ii as it would okay. turn out. They've been through all the 20s and the 30s, and now it's World War II. And are they the same? Is it the same character who is the who is the the detective? Yes, Maisie Dobbs is the is the detective. Um, and that's and, her name. And yeah. now she's in her 40s and she's she's a nurse again, or she's a spy again? Yes. In World yeah. War II? Yes, yeah, she is um, well, I don't want to spoil it if anyone wants to read it, but sure. yeah. Um okay. but yeah, she has well, yeah, she she's has still adventures. working. Yeah, she falls still- in love. Yeah, she's still working. She she falls in love. She she keeps keeps a toe in all her various specialty businesses. Sure. Um, uh, she met a man I'll married read those. Yeah. yeah. Um, they're uh, I turned my husband's uh, mom and aunt onto them, and they they are enjoying them. That's um, awesome. Yeah. So so and they're more historical. And there's there's like the Maggie Hope series is a big historical one. That that's involved spies during world war ii in Britain. okay a lot of women spied apparently right right there was uh there was steady work for women spies in world war ii <laughs> yeah and, uh, i just i i and there's been it's so interesting coming out of lockdown the number of like i think this week's episode or it'll be two weeks ago now but um was with ophira eisenberg and she has been reading um what you know her, what she's been reading as as she's like i can't uh there was an author named lawrence block Mm -hmm. and lawrence block i guess and i want to read those and they're just like they're about criminals they're about like the the burglar who um who has a heart of gold or who is like uh super smart and gets away with things and i was like well i'll read those too i mean yeah there's like donald westlake donald westlake donald westlake um he wrote he wrote the Dortmunder series that um, in the seventies and the, I think the eighties, and it was famously made into a movie with Robert Redford called the hot rock, Robert okay. Redford and George Siegel. And okay. so it's the criminals that you side with because, you know, in your head, they look like Robert Redford. <laughs> exactly. All of a sudden Robert Redford's at work right next to you. And you're like, hey, take whatever you'd like. And, yeah. uh, <laughs> that's hilarious. Yeah. And, yeah. So I, uh, have you seen those, the broken wood, series at all or the new zealand it's columbo set in um new zealand i i have not seen that um although i'm sure i will i saw the one with um who's the dr fantastic or what's the guy from ian something he was in the original not the original but he was in one of those gen one of those uh fantastic four um i wait there was some doctor murder it was sort of like Quincy. Isn't one of the Fantastic Four a uh, doctor and doesn't he become invisible or something? No, I have no idea what that is. So so it's an Australian actor, and I'm trying to remember the name of the the name of the series. There was an Australian doctor show that we saw. What the heck was that? It was um, I'm sure somebody is yelling at their iPod, their old timey. Mm. And somebody's iPod. correcting my 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 poor my poor knowledge of the of fantastic Marvel. Four franchi- tri- yeah, franchise yeah and that's the Sorry. other thing is i don't know enough about uh, the fantastic four i'm only reading the dan slot one right now it's actually quite good uh doctor his name is ian grufford oh did you I find him I, I don't yeah i don't know if i'm pronouncing that correctly the dr blake mysteries um with oh, craig oh, mclaughlin <laughs> the, the um 
Uh, Harrow is the name of the TV show I'm thinking of, but I have seen Dr. Blake as well. <laughs> and the Dr. Blake mysteries. I liked it until there was like, uh, a, a, until his housekeeper. Yeah, I think I liked the first two seasons and then his housekeeper got shafted or something. And I was like, I'm good. You don't know what you're doing. The mystery and- is when is the doctor going to figure out that he's gay? <laughs> right and uh well and his wife is in china with their daughter and his wife dies and his daughter reunites and you're like dude he's just not that into you is all i could think i didn't think it was gay i thought he's just not that into you you're not for him into the so into the housekeeper him. right into the housekeeper so um it was yeah so i saw those but broken one is actually it's it's kind of cool because it's set in wine country Oh, I'm now I'm listening. New Zealand. Yeah. That, right, exactly. Now I'm paying <laughs> attention. And and it's also ongoing. So there's, I think there's four or five seasons of it. So if you have run out of things, uh, I think it's on BritBox or Acorn or something like that. It's called uh, Broken Wood. Broken Wood. Yeah. And I will, uh, I'm making a note of that. And I was sad when it ended. And then there was a whole new season that came out as lockdown continued. And so then we were watching it in real time, <laughs> like every Monday night. And it was like, is there a new Broken Wood? And I was like, oh, my God, there is. <laughs> it's, so, it's, it's incredibly satisfying. <laughs> it was you- very satisfying when you had a weekly date with a show. It's kind of awesome. You know, like I, we were watching The Great British Bake Off and oh. that has that has a weekly vibe to it and then also all of the marvel tv shows were did it yeah weekly. yeah Fr- friday night this last six months or maybe longer became a really big tv night because it was wandavision yep um there was Low ted key. lasso um yep. ted lasso ba- was doing it yeah yeah bake off friday night morning show was friday night um <laughs> Right. It was almost like when we were kids yeah. and you were like, oh, Thursday night, I got to watch the thing. And, uh, oh, it's friends. And then Seinfeld and, you know, and, you know, it was like that. So it was the must see TV block. Right. Right. I do wonder if there's uh, now that they're uh, I don't think they're in lockdown in Britain anymore. I'm waiting for the next episode of something called Ghosts. Uh, which is a British sitcom that, um, and I've been talking about this for weeks as well. Hi, Rangers. Uh, yeah. Ghosts is uh, essentially, they sold a TV show, an improv troupe, an entire improv troupe sold a TV show. About- and so they, ab- about a couple that inherits a mansion in the British countryside. Oh, and, yes. And then they, they're doing an American version of it, but the British version of it is adorable. And oh. the and the chemistry between the improv troupe is yeah. obvious is is historical, right? I mean, they've been working together for a, a decade, and um, so there's all of these these ghosts that have been over the like. There's a Neanderthal, and there's a member of Parliament from the '80s without his pants on, and there's <laughs> a there's a Boy Scout troop leader with an arrow in his neck. And there's uh, Lady Button, who was one of the uh, the the w- original owners of the of the mansion, and uh, you know there's a bunch of different characters. There's a Regency poet, and um, wow. it's very silly. Yeah, and, and so yeah. What you, what can you watch this on? That one's on HBO Max. Oh, really? The original? Yeah, Ghosts. Yeah, oh, cool. the original's on HBO Max. Yeah. That's I didn't I knew it was a it was a new TV show. I think it's CBS or something, but mm-hmm. I didn't realize that it was originally a British show. So now I'm now I want to watch the British show. Yeah, the British show is super. Uh, it took a probably two episodes for me to go because it's super contrived, right? Right, right. She hits her head and then she can see the ghosts. <laughs> Prior to that, they cannot see the ghosts. You are, and I'm now, fine. there's yeah. gotta be there's gotta be a like, there's gotta be a convention. Yeah, right. There has to give me a reason for a suspension of disbelief and I will probably buy into it. It's uh, I just want to be entertained. Yeah, yeah, I mean, exactly. Like like we all we all got here. Like it's funny because when you take meetings and you're pitching mysteries and stuff, they're like, well, what may you know, what's like like, well, what's the reasoning that like she's so good at this, like and that she keeps getting these cases week after week. And it's like, 
because people watch this week after week. <laughs> So someone's going to die. That, that's the convention that we've all accepted. You know, they, everyone's looking to make it more complicated. Like maybe she's dating a cop or maybe her father's a lawyer. Like maybe there's. I loved Castle. Yeah. He was a mystery writer date for some reason. The, the, his He's friends with the mayor and the mayor insisted that the, the cop <laughs> hang out with him. Yeah. And, uh, so then the best looking cop in the whole wide world, that woman. <laughs> Has to hang out with Nathan Fillion, who's very handsome and cute, and uh, and they solve crimes. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. Yes. I don't care how we got there. If the second half of that sentence is they solve crimes, I don't need a lot up front. (laughs) You know, same thing with your show. She sees ghosts. I don't care if she fucking stuck her hand in a toaster and stepped in a puddle of water at the same time. Like, make it work. I want that to be what it was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's so so what are you so are you currently watching anything that's new or are you mostly doing a rewatch? Like um, I well, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm doing Death in Paradise. I'm on season two. This is my first my first go at that. Well, while I wait for Endeavor to come back sometime in 2022. Right. Um, yeah, so and I I'm really I'm really enjoying I'm really enjoying Death in Paradise. Um I'm and I just I, I can't talk about this book enough because this is uh, this is an excellent book as well as being an excellent mystery. But I don't know if yeah. you've heard of the Thursday Murder Club books. Um, um, Richard Osman is the writer and he's, I guess, a presenter in England. Right. I think he okay. hosts a quiz show or something. Right. Um, sorry if he's out there listening to the dork force that I don't know more of his. Bi- <laughs> I don't have more of his bio committed to memory. <laughs> Um, he, he wrote this book last year called the Thursday murder club. He just came out with the sequel and it's about, uh, Isn't people- endeavors, uh, gov no. named Thursday. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah. Th- uh, um, but it's not yeah, nothing to do with no, him. nothing to do with that. This guy has a Thursday murder club series, book series, book series. The first book's called the Thursday murder club. And it's about people living in a retirement community who go through old case files every oh. week and and that's why they're called the thursday murder club they they they, they okay. get the common room they book it under something called like japanese opera fanatics or something so that <laughs> everyone leaves them alone and they basically stumble onto a murder uh current mystery yeah and go about um solving that in both books and they're just really delightful just fun it's funny it it's um sometimes not too much it's exactly what I want in a book. It's it's really funny. It's wonderful characters. It, you know, every once in a while they kind of ponder something about life, <laughs> um, but in just enough. Just like, check in. Yeah, just, just check, check in. in. Yeah. What yeah. Are you, you got any big issues you want to think about for a second? Not too long. Just <laughs> ah, give it a page and a half, and then let's get back to it. And then let's and, move on. Yeah. And and so I I just like it's the type of book that I wish I had written. Like, yeah. honestly, I can't say more about it than that is that I wish I, the, the murders are really, the murder and the mysteries are really satisfying. Mm-hmm. Um, the story and the characters are funny and lovable and, um, you know, and then and there are people, you know, at the tail end of their life or, or close to it. And so they have thoughts sometimes that are really interesting about what that's like. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and there's only one book so far? Two. He just came oh. out with the second book in October. Okay, and, well, yeah. And it's the type of thing where every time I say to someone, listen, I have a book for you to read, they go, is it the Thursday murder? <laughs> <laughs> People are really into it. Um, okay. They're, they're delightful. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Cause I haven't heard of it yet. And I know that cause I have, um, I have been uh, trying to get my mother-in-law to read a couple of different series and she's on board because um, Andy's stepmom who passed, um, she really liked a very violent serial killer kind of vibe where it was more of a, it might be a Dean Koontz or a, um, or they were like, I know Fran read all the Jack Reacher books and she turned me on to those and I didn't mind them. I mean, I probably read a dozen of them or 10 of them. And, um, but eventually you're just like, okay, it gets laid around page 445. And, um, and you're like, that's good. I'm glad he's, glad it's working out for her. and um so i like to mix it up a little bit like i she's the sixth book in my favorite series of sherlock holmes 
fake Sherlock Holmes, like reimagining of Sherlock Holmes, very popular. The yeah, reimagining yeah. of Sherlock Holmes. Well, is this the ones that Anthony Horowitz is doing or is this someone else? This is someone else, a woman oh. named Sherry Thomas. Oh. Who writes romance novels that I don't like very much as or but these Lady Sherlock books, I freaking love them. Yeah. And oh, they, Lady Sherlock, yeah. Yeah, it's called the Lady Sherlock series. Uh, study in Scarlet the uh, study in scarlet letter or scarlet woman this is the first is the name of the first one and the sixth one just came out and it might be the best one. Oh wow yeah because we you finally get to meet moriarty and um Ooh. they like one three and six are my favorites and uh two and four are okay and five is great okay yeah uh Sounds great. I'm, I'm writing that down. I want to make a note of it for, uh, yeah, you would, you would, you would like them. I want to read, uh, the, this, uh, Thursday murder club and I want to do Maisie Dobbs. Maisie, I can send, I can seriously, I was going through the list. It's like, there, there's a couple that I don't, I'm like, did I read that? Like, I just <laughs> again, it's just that type of thing. I want the voices to stop in my head before I go to sleep. Otherwise yeah. I'm not going to go to sleep. Like I want mm -hmm. that, that script that runs all day long about all the terrible things that are happening and all the anxiety and what's going to go and, on and what you can do about them and what you cannot do about them. And you're like, I can't, I'm, I gotta go to bed. I gotta go it, to bed. I, got, I gotta <laughs> fall asleep. I gotta fall asleep and I gotta fall yeah. asleep with something that's, you know, the people I know who are like, Oh, I watched mad all before bed. I'm like, how is that? I am <laughs> my mother-in-law. You was would watch the news and does watch the news right before bed, and whenever she puts it on, when we're staying over there, I always go. I'm going to bed with a book. Going to put <laughs> some headphones in and not hear about whatever horrible things I like. And I've said this, uh, and I might as well engrave it on the inside of my eyelids. I like <laughs> my news two weeks late with a lot of analysis pony express <laughs> very sad that I, that I don't live in the days of the pony express because all i can do is help the person in front of me you know and yeah. and then and hopefully that's a ripple effect and you know I, I try to be a good citizen on the global level as well but i could really only affect that thing right in front of me so uh, well, yeah I, you know i i've I, i've been thinking about this a lot lately I'm in the the rage you know, we're all feeling in the, you know, wake sure. of the Rittenhouse verdict and, and, you know, uh, the rage we all feel in the wake of everything, right. You know, yep. what's going on in Texas and, and, and all that kind of stuff. And I just come back to like, what's really going to matter. Um, or one of the things that I know will have an effect is me focusing on the midterms, me focusing on le local elections. Like, like that's where, that's where a lot of this change is going to be possible and where it's going to happen or where it gets worse, you know, like, yep. I, I understand that change does not happen as quickly as we would all like it to happen. I also understand that if we don't make sure that we hold the house and hold the Senate and maybe even take back more seats in both, it's not going to, you know, it's going to get worse. And so I just go like, well, what, I understand the anger and I feel it, but I just have to come back to like, okay, these are tangible things that you can do and you mm -hmm. can do other things and raise awareness. And sometimes voicing your anger online is an important way to, but not right before signal to bed. others, not right before bed, <laughs> right before bed, you need to be well rested so you can fight the next day. Right. You need a little Agatha raisin. You need some Miss Fisher. Yeah. You need little Agatha raisin. Yeah. I'll, I'll you need the, you need the uh, you need the flappers who are virgins, the flappers who are whores, like whatever. <laughs> like you just need them all. Like uh, right, you just need you you need some uh, some a little light, and for some reason, the way humanity is, it's murder mysteries. <laughs> I don't know why. I, I again, I think that it's it's a very it's like okay, I know that the bad guy's gonna get caught, he's gonna see justice. And a lot of these characters are very colorful. A lot of these characters, there's either an escape in a period specifically, a lot of Victorians. We haven't even gotten to the Victorian midwife who solves crime. She's a thing, you uh, know? <laughs> I, we just started Call the Midwife, um, which is a TV show. Sure, I've seen some and, of that, yeah. Yeah, and Andy's like, it seems sad. This seems to be a lot of sort of noble rich people helping the poor. And I was like, 
it might be that we don't know we've only two episodes in <laughs> but uh you know uh but if if uh if that's all I can find, but so I'm, what I really am looking for is because I couldn't get into Olive and Time. Okay, right? I don't. I'm not. Yeah, I don't think I. That was a British old lady murder mystery. Oh um, right. TV show, mm-hmm. but the closer I might try the closer or Major Crimes. Major Crimes is the sequel to the closer, and I actually ended up liking Major Crimes better. Okay. Um and it might just be that it was more of an ensemble cast at that point. And it's, um, is it American or is it where they're, no, it... they're both American. Um, okay. Kira Cedric is the lead in the closer. And then, you know, so it's really focused on her and not that I don't think Kira Cedric's a great actress or anything. Um, but you know, it became a lot of the same characters stayed on for major crimes and it became more of an ensemble, just I think focus more on the murder mystery and less on the main character in her life. And um, okay, and who's the the Mary? I'm forgive me, dorks in the dork forest. Um, <laughs> the Mary actress from B- Battlestar Galactica. She plays the president. Um, Don't know. Never. Saw she's it. got that like. But everybody really great knows her. voice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, is she in ma- is she in the major crimes? She's in major crimes. Yeah, she's like the the main cop lady. <laughs> so if if I liked. Um... Uh, if, if I, if I liked, um, Endeavor and Miss Fisher, what should I also be watching? Um, that's a, that's a really good, I mean, I, I, you've seen Death in Paradise, um, Mm -hmm. and I'm really liking that. You know, I, I saw this show, this is, so, so there's two shows, um, one is just fun. It's not necessarily murder mystery, but it's procedural. It's called Hustle. And it's a British show and it's like seven or eight seasons. You can get on an Amazon and it's about con artists. But again, they- Is it leverage? It's, well, it's before leverage. (laughs) Probably they base leverage on it. I I, love leverage. Yeah, it's it's Adrian Lester. I don't know if you know who he is. He's, um, there's some great, some amazing talent um, in it. And the idea is that they con, only con rich assholes. Oh, right, so, right. so, so it's leverage. Yeah. So you don't yeah. feel bad for the people they're conning and you want them to succeed and it's fun. And they play different characters every week as part of the con. So that's, that's, a, and like, again, you feel very like, oh, I know this is going to turn out well for everyone. Yeah. And I feel very safe in this show. <laughs> um, and the other show I was going to suggest, oh my God, I had it. And I just, oh, okay. So this is kind of a goofy watch, but also fun is, called new tricks and this Never ran for that. 12 seasons <laughs> um i can't remember if it's on brit box or acorn i think i saw it through amazon but i don't remember how right. and um and the idea is that and it's got this hokey very country and western theme song that you just have to like that you're like yeah yeah oh. um but the idea is that it's a squad of retired cops being led by this woman who of course had a career misstep so now she's running a, a squad of career of retired oh, cops and right. doing, you know they're doing uh cold cases basically okay you oh know? that so, uh, that sounds right up my alley yeah <laughs> yeah i'm watching that for sure oh good it's cool. it, you know and they're they're it's one of those things like you just the characters grow on you again it's yeah. a show where all you know you know even the main female lead isn't like you know she's solidly i would guess in her 40s when it starts right. runs for 12 seasons so you're kind of mm-hmm. like this is again older people solving crimes or yeah. what we don't put on tv in america yes you know <laughs> can you make the retired cop 35 yes uh Des rafferty yeah. i have to say that this has been an hour we're we're, <laughs> we're, we're, we're at the we've done it everyone <laughs> should go and it will be what's your handle What's your um, handle? My handle on Twitter is at Tess Rafferty. There you go. And, and that Instagram, will be in the notes. Yeah. yeah. And Instagram, it's at the Tess Rafferty. The um, Tess. And you can get my books. Just Google me, my fan, my, my, my author page, I guess they call it on Amazon yeah. will come up. You can get my books there. So on Kindle and in paperback. And I hope you love them because uh, they're super fun and it's all about Italy. Yeah. It's all about murder. <laughs> So thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you so much for getting me on, Jackie. I really appreciate it. You have a wonderful Thanksgiving. And Rangers, you know the rules out there. Take care of each other. My hat, my hat, my hat. They're dancing around my hat. (laughs) My hat, my hat, my hat. Well, what do you think of that? 
If it looks like a Mexican hat dance and it sounds like a Mexican hat dance, it's most likely a Mexican hat dance. So take off your hat and let's dance. Yay! Oh my God. We, why don't we just call that as the end of the show?